Welcome back to the channel family and yes we're here to cover something that I'm hearing a lot of discussions about but I'm not quite sure people really understand what's going on that is I keep reading China's economy is going to collapse the banking system is going to collapse I remember even watching a video it blew up it was viral everyone out there watching it and it said that in so many days that the Chinese economy was going to be done the banking system was going to collapse and guess what we're past that day and it didn't collapse so I, I am so tired of hearing all of these uh, videos out there talking about what's gonna happen here and there putting timelines on them the timelines come and go no one even has to come back out and answer why they were wrong about it so I'm gonna give you a little idea about what is going on over in China and that it really is pretty bad and this is affecting a lot of the world and people used to say when we would get out here about the US would sneeze the rest of the world would catch a cold that was a way way back a couple decades ago I would absolutely argue that it is now if China or the US sneezes the rest of the world catches a cold and what are we seeing right now I would argue that we're seeing the US and China both have colds. so what's that mean for the rest of the world and we're gonna talk a little bit about that you're gonna see a little bit of uh, historical data here that's going to open your eyes to what is happening and hopefully get a better understanding of why the Chinese economy could be in dire straits and having their own little Lehman Brothers moment and what they're going to do to try to get out of this and yes it does affect us you're seeing a lot of plays over there getting hammered down neo Alibaba a whole bunch of them and for good reason so uh, don't think that Evergrande isn't gonna be brought up either we got a lot of things to talk about now before we do get into it of course hit the moo moo link down below take advantage of this put a hundred dollars in after hitting the link and you'll get five stocks worth up to ten grand and if you put in two thousand more you'll get fifteen stocks worth up to thirty thousand so take advantage of that and of course I do have the Weeble link all you gotta do is put a dollar in after you hit the link and you will get 12 stocks or I should say up to 12 stocks could be worth up to 30k it depends on the random number generator and where it goes so what's going on well take a look at this headline China's home price slump reaches a year as crisis drags on and so declines deepen in August despite measures to revive demand more needs to be done to restore home buyer confidence so as you would look at something like this and you're hearing that the the housing what's going on the housing they have absolutely done some crazy things over the last few decades in when it comes to housing we're going to get into that because that is leading into what the issue is right now you're seeing revolts we're not going to pay our mortgages we're not going to pay for anything because they didn't get their houses yet and it's it's a weird it's a weird situation how they're doing it and uh, like i said it does take me back to our own little issues we had in 2007 to 2010. Remember the Great Recession era when the housing, you could go into a bank in the US and get non-verified income loans. You can go in and say, hey, they wouldn't even verify your income, get a loan for a house, you could have multiple houses. And boy, you could see some of the interviews back then of people getting the houses. And, Oh my, my, my. And what happened? Well, we know what happened. Remember the big short, the movie, the big short, if you haven't watched it, watch it. Great one. Uh, talking about Michael Burry and how he came out and made a lot of money betting against the housing. Well, in China, they're going through their own little system. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to flash back to, and we're going to go back to, what do we got here? 2017, just five years ago. And I'm going to show you some charts later on in this video that will hopefully open your eyes a little bit more to uh, some of the similarities between the U.S. and China. Check this out. Lottery to stabilize Shanghai housing. What? What? You want to talk about something wild. Uh, if you wanted a house, they will introduce a lottery system for sales of new residential projects as demand is overtaking supply. So not only, uh, <laughs> not only do you have everybody needing housing because everybody's coming into the cities to work, they can make more money, housing is demanding. Now they're gonna turn it into a lottery, which they did five years ago. And that meant everybody knew that the demand was starting to absolutely crush the supply. And so people had to get into this lottery at this place to go ahead 
and get housing. And so you can imagine what kind of hysteria that would produce if you found out that the, the supply side was being limited and the only way you can get it, it's almost like gamifying real estate, is that you had to be put into a lottery and hope that you got selected. You know, So it's like once you get selected, you feel like, oh my God, it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity. And wait till you see some of the price increases off these properties. Everyone was loading money into it. Properties had nowhere to go but where? Up, and they were gone, and we're gonna talk about that. So, pre-selling homes. What do we got here, Mel? Pre-selling homes in China was a developer's dream. Now it's only a matter of time before it explodes. This is the issue. These are what is happening. When you look at this right now, and we get down into it, you had people coming out and they were to prepay before the project even started. These people were paying, 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 and the developers are out there raising the money, and guess what? It was all the money they were getting in, they didn't pay interest on it. So instead of having to go to a bank to get money and have to pay interest, these people were taking all, the developers were taking the, the client's money and using it. And of course, as we know, uh, they continued to expand because the demand was great. Everybody wanted it. They were trying to do as much as they can, leveraging it to the point uh, that, of course, they were trying to maximize all the revenue. And we know, as we look, here we go. What happened at the end of this story? Well, everybody was prepaying, prepaying before we even got the work started. And of course, China's mortgage boycotts started up. Why hundreds of thousands of people are saying, we won't pay. So they were coming out of the woodwork saying, look, you're not even working on our housing. You continue to want us to pay. We don't have a house. We want our house and we're not gonna pay until you get us our house. And you know, in the US, you get the house, you get the mortgage, and you start paying on the mortgage once you got your house. That is not the way it was working over here. So over there, they were over there paying and paying and they had nowhere to live, but they can, they're expected to continue to pay. The developers were not building anymore. It was getting ugly. And before you think to yourself, well, what's the big deal? Remember how back in the, the uh, Great Recession when we had the implosion in the real estate market, well, that was almost the doom and gloom of the entire world economy. I'm telling you, the financial system around the world almost came to collapse. We had emergency meetings by all the people, all the central banks around the world to figure out how we could stop this before everything exploded and imploded and we had devastation like we have never seen before in terms of financial loss. And of course, as you know, we'll show you some of the markets here, it got ugly. Is this the Lehman Brothers moment? Is this the moment that we see China go through that we went through you know, a good 15 years ago? And that's the big question. That's the million dollar question. Here you go, and here's some of the articles coming out from people studying it. China's Ponzi-like property market is eroding faith in the government. And this is where I lead into the next thing. We know over there that as they watch the citizens and they're seeing, and the citizens aren't riled up at the government yet. And that's what I'm watching because as you see this, you know that the people just want their home. So they're mad at the developers, but it'll be a mo and it won't take long of people losing their money, not having homes before they turn that attention from the developers to the government of why are you not helping me? And why are you not out here getting these homes built for us? Why are you not here for us? And that doesn't take long when people are suffering. And so I think as you see this, uh, it will erode faith in the government as more and more people are suffering, losing their money. And that is something I know they wanna avoid. They could come out and do what we did back in the US back then is throw so much money at the problem to fix it and kick the can down the road and make new rules, make new laws, of course, and that is something I'm not gonna be surprised to see. They have the money to fix it, and it's just a question what they're gonna do. Now, what do we what do we remember though? Remember some of the headlines back here? Fed warns China's pro uh, property problems could hurt global markets and the US economy. And so before you think that this has nothing to do with the US, remember what I said. If China sneezes, the world catches a cold, if U.S. sneezes, the world catches a cold, but if we both get colds, that gets ugly for everyone. And so if this turns into a major, the China economy just 
plummets down. We see all kinds of bad issues. They got lockdowns on top of this because of COVID. Couple that with this, and we'll say the real estate collapsing down. Oh, this could get real ugly. And yes, I'm watching it. I am concerned about it. I know it's putting downward pressure on a lot of stocks that are based over there, but it could get a lot worse or or the government could step up and start spending vast amounts of money to try to control it. But that'll have an effect as well. And we'll have to see what they decide to do. And uh, here's the thing. This is how closely we are tied to China. US 2022 US trade in goods with China. These are in billions, I should say. So it's 36 billion. We, are, we have a deficit of 36 billion. That's how much we're pulling in. In July, we brought in 34 billion more than they bought from us. And so you can see it continues. It looks like it's just continuing higher and higher. That we're, we're bringing in more and more and more stuff from China. And so if you do not believe that we have an active interest in what happens over in China, and that China doesn't have an active interest in what happens in the US, you are sadly mistaken because both countries have trillions of dollars at stake in terms of revenue over the next few years. And uh, we'll find out how it goes. But as you can see, and I go down through here, it's been it's been ugly for a long time. $346 billion deficit, 375. 418 and 218. It just kept getting higher. 2019, it started to come back down a little bit. 342 billion. Uh, then 2020, 308. We got that deficit shrunk. And then all of a sudden in 2020, something happened because guess what? It's starting to go higher again. 353. And then of course now we're not we're about halfway uh, through the year, a little over halfway, so we're at 234. We could be on pace to see this thing hit $400 billion uh, deficit in trade with China. So these are things I'm watching because it's gonna have an effect on our markets, all right? And look at this, US imports from China account for 18.6% of overall US imports in 2020. It means everything we bring in from around the world, we get on, we get 18.6% of it from China. Now this next piece out of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, check this out. China's overextended real estate sector is a systemic problem and they go into it and why it could affect a lot of different things. And of course, as you know, the real estate in the US back then absolutely ended up crushing the financial system in the US and globally. Could the same thing happen in China? Could the real estate bust actually end up causing a major problem for the financials over there, thus spreading around the world? That's the million dollar question, or for China, the trillion dollar question. Uh, what do we got here? Deepening downturn, China's home prices hadn't dropped in six years. This is the chart I wanted to share. Check this out. If you wanted to have answers for what's happening over there, these are price increases and these are monthly increases. Imagine buying a house and your house in one month goes up 2%. The next month, one and a half percent. The month before, the next month, another percent. You got 4% after 90 days of, and if you have a million dollar house, all of a sudden you made 40 grand in, in 90 days just from the increase increases in prices and it never looks back. It just keeps up a half percent to a percent of every month. And now finally, you're starting to see a little bit of downward push in terms of prices. Prices are finally dropping over there. And this is new home prices. And that is what uh, I believe is going to continue to happen. So take a look, average price in China, 2010, all the way up to 2020, more than doubling, more than doubling in price. Real estate shouldn't climb that fast. You should not be seeing a 10% gain over a 10% gain every year, nonstop for 10 years. And that uh, is where you see that demand rushing in. But now everybody is getting hammered. The real estate bust is upon them and they're gonna see a lot of pain just like we did here back in that 2009, 2010 time. And so that's some of the things we need to watch. Real residential property prices for the US. Let's take a look because I just showed you China right here. See that upwards? Well, it does not look familiar 10 years. 
Well, here's a down, right? This is about 10 years. Same thing happened over in China. What happened here? You're seeing this little drop, right? That was, what little drop are we talking about? Well, if we go back here, little drop right there. And then all of a sudden, what happened after everything imploded? We had the monster drop down. And now we're actually recovering back up because of the issues. And that's why you're seeing the Fed get super aggressive in the States. But this is the part I wanted to share. This is what they are trying not to have happen happen over in China because if this happens, we are all going to be paying a price. And so I don't want you guys sleeping on this. Pay attention to global news. Even if you're not invested in any stocks over there, it will affect our markets and the global market. So I believe that their government's going to do everything they can, throw money and everything at it to try to solve it. But there's no guarantees. I don't got a crystal ball here. I can't tell you the future, but I can look at the past based on similar uh, instances and tell you that it's ugly out there and it is only getting more ugly. People are protesting, not paying their, their mortgages over there. And there's hundreds of thousands of people and it could turn into millions of very quickly. So this is just a quick update. I wanted to give you an idea of what I thought, what I was seeing out there and, and uh, exactly where we could go, which could be down deeper. I don't think the pain over for them and this could easily affect a lot of us around here so that's the big update for the day if you haven't done it take advantage of the moomoo link down below get yourself up to well up to 15 stocks you put up two grand in put a hundred dollars or more in using my link you'll get five free stocks worth up to ten thousand and of course if you go over there and hit the weeble link put a dollar in you'll get up to 12 free stocks could be worth up to 30 grand and then come on over to the patreon we have that private discord we're probably in there shooting the breeze right now i appreciate you stopping by Let's get out there and make some money.